that uh, you are here. We have some folks that are here that are helping us with sound and music. And then for our friends that are unable to be with us here tonight, we miss you. Uh, the building looks empty without you here. And we certainly look forward to the time when we'll be able to meet together again. We welcome you and thank you for joining our services this evening, wherever you might be. And we are going to have some prayer requests, a bit of time, and do a Bible study this evening. And we'll sing a couple of hymns. Uh, Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus and Rock of Ages. If you want to sing along with us and you want to uh, Google the words or go get a songbook and look it up or just sing from memory, we'll sing those in a bit of time. J. Sidlow Baxter said, Doubt sees the obstacles, faith sees the way. Doubt sees the darksome night, faith sees the day. Doubt dreads to take the step, faith soars on high. Doubt whispers, who believes? And faith answers, I. In these uh, terrible days, we have a terrific God. And I said this last Sunday, in uncertain times, we have a God of certainty. And in unstable times, we have a firm foundation in the Lord Jesus Christ. And it's so good to know the Lord. He is our hope. He is our help. He is our peace. And we'll speak some more of that in a bit of time when we get into the Word of God. Uh, we'll sing at this time, Tis So Sweet to Trust in Jesus. We'll sing three verses of that, the first, the second, and the last. Anthony, you come and lead us. Tis So Sweet to trust in Jesus. Tis so sweet to trust in Jesus, just to take Him at His word, just to rest upon His promise, just to know, thus saith the Lord, Jesus, Jesus, how I trust Him, how I proved Him more and more. Jesus, Jesus, precious Jesus, oh, for grace to trust Him more. Oh, how sweet to trust in Jesus, just to trust His cleansing blood, trust in simple faith to plunge me. Responsibility that uh, many of our leaders have upon them making decisions that affect people's lives, trying to do what's best uh, for our country. And so uh, pray, pray for wisdom. Pray for wisdom. I, I hear a, a bit of complaining about, uh, around about uh, things that, uh, decisions that have been made. And, you know, it's easy to complain, but if we just focus our prayer in those areas and ask God to give them wisdom, and I just pray that they would make the decisions uh, that would be the will of God. We have a, a few uh, specific requests that I'd like to mention to you. There is a Brother Lutrick. He is an evangelist a friend, and he has the coronavirus. And uh, certainly, I know many of you would have friends and loved ones who have been affected by uh, this illness. And 
I said this the other day, it won't be long until someone that we know has it, and there's some uh, in our communities about us, in our county, certainly in our state, as, uh, as well as uh, the nation and around the world. And so we just pray for those that are affected physically uh, by this virus. There's a young man by the name of Gerald. Gerald has meningitis. He's been airlifted up to St. Louis and was having some great difficulties yesterday. Uh, today, uh, some of those difficulties have been relieved, I think, from a surgery that the doctors were able to do. And so we'll pray for a young man named Gerald. We pray uh, for Miss Redmond. Miss Redmond continues to recover uh, from a surgery that she had a couple of weeks ago. And we uh, thank God for the, the good word that uh, she's healing and doing better. We pray as she continues uh, to recover from that. Our brother Les is continuing to uh, have uh, cancer treatments. And so, Brother Les, we're praying for you. And there's a Mr. Hugh uh, that we mentioned the other day, last Sunday, having trouble with uh, some healing in his cornea. And we just pray that uh, God would touch touch his body. Certainly want to pray for our nation. I got a text message today. There were several preachers that prayed today at uh, what was our two o'clock hour. Uh, praying for a national revival. Praying that uh, God would uh, do something in our midst. That uh, though our, our churches have a temporary mandate against us not being able to meet. And uh, we certainly are affected by that. And we miss you being here. Uh, but we uh, pray that God would uh, do great works in our heart. Uh, when you tell somebody they can't do something, it makes them want to do it that much more. And so I'm just praying that uh, maybe these, these mandates can be lifted by Easter and we can gather back here on Easter Sunday and just see God work in a, in a real and a powerful way. And though we're paused in meeting, that we'd be poised to do great things when the mandates are lifted. I'm praying for you that you'll spend extra time in the Word of God, extra time in prayer, and in encouragement to others, and to find something each day, some way to encourage someone, and some way to be a blessing, to minister, even in these times. I was reminded yesterday of how Paul and Silas, though they were in prison, they were locked down, they couldn't go anywhere, and yet still they ministered. And it was, uh, it was shaky times going on where Paul and Silas were, and yet God used their joy and the song that they had. God used that uh, to bring conviction uh, upon the heart of that jailer there where they were. And of course, you know that uh, he was converted to Christ. And so even in the midst of difficulty and even in lockdown, uh, you can be a blessing and you can be an encouragement to someone and you can point someone to Christ and encourage you to do so. I'm praying that God would give us opportunities uh, along those lines in these days. And certainly praying for the lost who, without God and without hope, they, uh, they uh, just simply have uh, the catastrophe and the panic that's about them to whatever degree they have applied that to their life. And that through uh, some uh, turn of these events that they uh, would turn in repentance and in faith to God and believe in Him and call upon His Son, Jesus Christ. I'm praying for our missionaries in these days. Uh, certainly with uh, the churches not meeting, then uh, finances will be down and our missionaries are depending on the giving of God's people. They're out on the front line. They, in countries where they minister, they can't work where they are. They're depending on us. And I encourage you uh, to be faithful. If you're not able to be here uh, to give on a weekly basis, you save that. When the time comes that we're able to gather back, that uh, you would uh, be able to, to give and so that we can continue to provide for our missionaries, pray for them in their, their spiritual battles. Some of the countries are where they are. They are, are bound to home, and uh, it's on the, the penalty of, of imprisonment or jail. And so uh, we, we at least have a, our, our government, uh, though they've taken some drastic measures, they uh, have been gracious with us, and uh, we're most appreciative of what we are still allowed to do, the liberties that we enjoy in this great nation. Let's go to the Lord in prayer. At this time, ask God's blessings upon these requests. Our Father, we come to you as we have many times in these last few days. Certainly, God, when uh, circumstances change in our life, it brings us to a greater level of prayer. 
Shame on us for that being so, but it is true. Lord, as we bow our heads before Thee now, we thank You for Your goodness. We thank You for Your grace and mercy, Your long-suffering and patience that You have toward us. Thank You for the great opportunities that You have afforded us. We don't realize how precious it is to meet and assemble together as a church family until uh, we're not able to do so for a period of time. God, we certainly look forward to our church being back here. And uh, Lord, though we, uh, we can't see one another physically right now, we're praying for one another. And Lord, we're trying to encourage one another, lift one another up. And Lord, be a, a good example and uh, be an encouragement in these days. We pray, as we mentioned, pray for our leaders, pray for our president and those that he is surrounded with, the leaders in, in, our, in our country, in the House and the Senate. Lord, for the leaders in our state, the state level and the local level, uh, right down to uh, those that, are, that work here in our city. We pray for wisdom and we uh, pray, God, that you would give them direction and discernment uh, to know what decisions that need to be made. And we ask for your will to be done in these times. We pray, God, that uh, uh, our attention we would be directed toward you, not uh, just as individuals, certainly as individuals, but not just as individuals. Lord, as a, as a church uh, family, a church body, and uh, Lord, as a nation, as uh, a world, may you have our attention and may we be listening uh, to you and looking to you. Uh, Lord, you are our hope and you are our source of help. Father, we trust in you. These times of difficulty, might our faith increase, uh, Lord, and we'll see you answer prayer and see you come through in miraculous ways. And Lord, be careful to note those things and give you uh, thankfulness and gratitude for your goodness in our life, for these specific needs for Brother Lutrick and for uh, Miss Redmond and for Brother Les, and we uh, pray for Mr. Hugh and Mr. Gerald. We uh, know these folks have health needs. We ask that you would uh, touch their bodies and be with them in these times. And, and God, that you would help them. Lord, for those that uh, have been touched by uh, this virus that is uh, rampant about the world, uh, Lord, we pray for the, uh, the doctors that are working with them. Give them health and, and, and shelter them and protect them. Uh, Lord, for those that are working on cures, give them wisdom. Give them instruction. And uh, God, just pray that uh, through all of this, somehow you could be honored and glorified. And pray for our churches across the land, Lord, that are temporarily unable to meet and assemble together. And uh, Lord, we pray that you would, uh, God, through this time, that you would challenge our hearts. And, uh, Lord, may we be eager and, and uh, uh, sitting on ready and anxious to go and get about your business and your work when these mandates are lifted and uh, we're able to... Uh, join one another in church and in ministry again. We uh, pray, uh, Lord, for our, our church family. And God, in these days, as, as we can't come together and see one another here and encourage one another, God, that we'd get in your word. And Lord, we'd spend time in prayer, extra time in prayer, and, uh, Lord, in devotion, and that our lives would uh, be changed and drawn closer to thee. In these days, Lord, our, our circumstances are changed. Folks are not able to go to work and school and a lot of things are different than what they were even a week or a month ago. God, with this extra time, may we take the time to focus on you. And uh, Lord, look to you. God, uh, we uh, may our hearts turn toward you and we'll be most blessed by your presence and by your goodness in our lives. Lord, for those that might be about us who do not know Christ, they're without God and without hope. Lord, use our lives. Use somehow these days uh, as a testimony, as uh, a time to, to cause them to ponder, uh, Lord, their eternal state, and that they would, uh, in repentance and faith, turn to you and call upon Jesus Christ and trust him for one day be eternally too late. For our missionaries, God, uh, you would bless them, each and every one of them. Brother Sam, Miss Barb, our missionary of the week this week, pray that you would put a, a, a hedge and a shelf of protection about them. God, that uh, you'd meet their needs and protect them in their ministry that they do concerning the Word of God. God, may you be honored and glorified and uplifted in all things that we do even here tonight. Lord, I pray that you'd strengthen your people. I pray that they would be uplifted in heart. Lord, as we preached on Sunday, that we would find a place of cheer uh, in Jesus Christ and that uh, 
He would be our joy and our strength for these days. Father, these requests we'd ask certainly according to your will that it would be done. We'd ask them for your honor and glory and we would ask them in Jesus' name. Amen. Amen. Just a few announcements before we sing our second song. I want to remind you that uh, on this coming Sunday, we'll be here again online with the Facebook Live and then on our YouTube uh, channel as well. That will be at 11 a.m. this coming Sunday. And then Sunday, the weather is supposed to be pretty. It's supposed to be 65 degrees and sunny. So we're going to plan a, a service at our camp property. That's on D.D. Highway, just north of town. And, of course, your church folks will know where it's at, at the corner of D.D. and Highway 53. And we will be uh, in a service there in the parking lot. We have a way to digitally transmit a signal into your automobile. So you can pull up in the parking lot. You won't have to leave your car. And uh, you can just join us there. And we'll have a service of some sort. I promise you one thing we're doing these days. We are making memories. And that will be a memorable time. And you plan on being there if you are able. This coming Sunday at 3 p.m., that will be at Camp Calvary out on D.D. Highway just north of Campbell, Missouri, where D.D. Highway and Highway 53 intersect uh, to the west of Highway 53. And then if you're unable, unable to do that, here uh, Sunday morning at 11 o'clock, join us here online. Again, don't forget your missions commitments. And uh, think about those missionaries and remember them at these times. If you have a, an email or if you have a, a way to contact one of them, maybe I know some of our folks keep in contact with some of our missionaries around the world. Uh, you contact them and let them know that you're praying for them in these times. I spoke to a couple today who are locked down in their homes. They cannot leave their homes. And it's a, it's a strict order for them to be there. And they're, uh, they're in a difficult way. And so we pray for them. Pray for our missionaries. Pray that God would touch and strengthen them. We'll sing another song. Rock of ages, cleft for me. Uh, let me hide myself in thee. chapter number 5, we'll read two verses there, and then we'll read a couple of verses from 1 Kings chapter 17 and 18, that will be our, our main text this evening, but we'll begin in the book of James chapter number 5, and read some thoughts from James chapter 5, beginning in verse 16. James writing, Confess your faults one to another, and pray for one another, that ye may be healed. The effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. Elias was a man subject to like passions as we are, and he prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. And he prayed again, 
And the heaven gave rain, and the earth brought forth her fruit. Now, in the Old Testament, the book of 1 Kings, 1 Kings chapter number 17. 1 Kings chapter number 17. This is the Old Testament account of what we just read in James chapter number 5. This is the Old Testament account of what took place here with Elijah and Ahab and the prophets of Baal. 1 Kings chapter 17, and the word of God says, And Elijah the Tishbite, who was of the inhabitants of Gilead, said unto Ahab, As the Lord God of Israel liveth, before whom I stand, there shall not be dew nor rain these years, but according to my word. There shall not be rain, there shall not be dew, but according to my word. I have titled this lesson this evening, A Picture of the Power of Prayer. A Picture of the Power of Prayer. Elijah's prayer, as we read from the book of James chapter 5, Elijah's prayer was an effectual prayer. When Elijah prayed, God answered. He asked something of God and God gave him the answer to that request. His prayer was effectual. It caused something to happen. It caused something to change. It was an effectual prayer. James tells us that the prayer of Elijah was a fervent prayer. He prayed earnestly, the Bible says. He prayed with fervor. He prayed with zeal. He prayed earnestly. And it was a, uh, it was a common prayer. We look at some of the prayers of Elijah in the Word of God. Elijah's not a wordy man. He, he, his prayers do not contain a lot of words, the ones that are recorded. Sometimes they're only one sentence long. And he's simply talking to God. And God is answering him in response. The Bible tells us about Elijah that he was a man subject to like passions as we are. He was a man, a human, just like you, just like me. And when I read his prayers, they are powerful prayers, but they're common prayers. They're, they're prayers that, the, that a common man might pray. Uh, the difference is not the common man but he's praying to an uncommon God. And he's praying to a God who is looking upon a nation, a nation that is in peril, a nation that has turned her back on God. There is a king, Ahab. Ahab is in power. Uh, the, the king is a perverse king. He has turned to idolatry. He has turned against the God of his fathers. He is living in idolatry and then I see not only a nation in peril and a king in perversion, but a child of God in prayer. And as Elijah comes to God with a request, he, he comes with a request that's a, a simple request. Many people have prayed for a request along these lines. I wonder how many have been answered as Elijah was. I have had times that I prayed for rain. Elijah goes to God and he prays for it not to rain. He prays for a drought to come. He prays for God to shut up the heavens and for the rain to stop falling. A, a drought is a difficult time to live in. And he prays in a time of drought, Elijah prays. He prayed. The Bible just simply tells us that. That he prayed. He prayed that it might not rain. And the Bible says that it did not rain. I want you to notice a few things about this prayer. I would say this. 
that Elijah is going to stand before a king. A, a man who will stand before a king must be prepared with what he will say. But there are some things that the Bible tells us about standing uh, before kings. And a couple of those are found in the book of Proverbs. Solomon recorded this. He said, A man's gift maketh room for him, and bringeth him before great men. That's Proverbs chapter 18 and verse 16. A man's gift maketh room for him. I might say this about Elijah. This day that he prayed that it would not rain and it did not rain, we're not given any picture of any prior life of Elijah, but I would say this is probably not his first prayer. He probably has prayed to God many times before and seen God answer him in miraculous ways. This is not his first experience in prayer. He is well seasoned in prayer. He perhaps had developed that gift in preparation for a day such as this. When calamity comes, if that's when you begin to pray, I'm glad that God can hear at the time of calamity. But if that's when you've began to pray, you've waited too late. Pray before the trouble comes. Pray before the circumstances turn sideways. Pray before the drought gets there and your heart will be prepared no matter what comes. Seest thou a man diligent in his business? He shall stand before kings. He shall not stand before mean men. Again, Proverbs 22 and verse 29. So we might say that uh, Elijah, though he prayed a common prayer, he prayed a, an earnest prayer, he prayed a fervent prayer, he prayed a diligent prayer, and he prayed a gifted prayer. He had a gift that he had developed. And I might say this about that prayer. It was an answered prayer. That God heard the voice of Elijah as he prayed. Uh, a man of God said many years ago, I don't know who to attribute this to, but a man of God that I heard, I wrote it down in the back of my Bible, he said something like this, He who will stand before men must first kneel before God. He who will stand before men must first kneel before God. And no doubt as we find the record, this account, 1 Kings chapter 17, Elijah comes on the scene and he tells Ahab, that according to my word, there will not be dew, there will not be rain for a space of three and a half years, uh, indicating to me that Elijah, before he ever comes to Ahab, he has already been in a place where he's talked with God. He has communicated with God already. He knelt before his God with a prayer. He stood before this king with a promise, a prophecy that it was going not to rain. And this would be a three and a half year prophecy and promise. Let me ask you a question. Could you pray yourself into a corner? Could you pray yourself into a difficult situation as Elijah did? Could you ask God to bring you into a place of difficulty, into a place of need? He himself, Elijah, has prayed and asked for this. He will go through the same drought that everyone else is going through. He will go through the same need that everyone else is going through. Could you pray yourself into a corner and into a hardship for your nation to be awakened? For God to get the attention of your leadership. For Ahab to know that there is a God in heaven. Elijah is willing to pray himself into a corner under a, under a difficult circumstance into a drought situation. Elijah does that. He calls on God. God answers his prayer. Subsequently, after he prayed, and he stands before Ahab with this word, it will not rain, but according to my word, we see the power of prayer, the power of prayer. We see Elijah subsequently living how? We see him living by circumstance? Do we see him living by chance? Or does Elijah live on purpose? When you pray on purpose, you must live on purpose. And I want you to notice how Elijah lives then after he prays. Verse number 2, 1 Kings chapter 17, 
the Bible says, and the word of the Lord, and the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, get thee hence. Then in verse number 5 of the same chapter, the Bible says, so he went and did according unto the word of God. After Elijah prays, the drought is coming upon the land. He has stood before Ahab, the most powerful man in the land. He has stood before him. He has given him this promise, this prophecy that, that a drought is coming. And how will he then begin to live his life? By circumstance and by chance or will he begin to live it by the word of God. The word of the Lord came unto him, so he went and did according to the word of God. Again, verse 8. The Bible says, and the word of the Lord came unto him saved. Now, both of these accounts, verse number 2 and verse number 8, have to do with God supplying his need, the need of food. He has the need of food, and God takes care of that. Verse 8, the word of the Lord came unto him, saying, verse 9, arise. So, verse 10, he arose and went. Verse 14, for thus saith the Lord God of Israel. He is recounting what the promises of God are to uh, this uh, widow. Then verse 16, the barrel of mill wasted not, Neither did the cruise of oil fail according, according to the word of the Lord which he spake by Elijah. You can see it over and over in chapter 18 verse 1. It came to pass after many days the word of the Lord came to Elijah. So let me make my, my statement, my point here and I'll, I'll move on. In times of difficulty, our life need not be guided by circumstance. The world is placing circumstances upon us. Our society has us in a box. It has us in a hard place. And we need not live by circumstance and by chance. Our life can be guided by Scripture. Not by circumstance, but by Scripture. Not by what's going around us, going on around us, but by the mandates that we receive from the Lord. I'm glad we are, we are obeying the mandates that have been given to us in our state. But I'm glad that there's a higher mandate in the Word of God. And God gives us direction in His Word. And in time of adverse circumstances, Elijah does not find himself alone and unguided. He finds the Word of God to be sufficient. He finds the Word of God to be specific in his life. And God led him specifically. And God provided for him sufficiently. And Elijah lives according to the Word of God. Elijah prayed at the time of drought. He prayed and the drought came. And then I remind you, you stay there in 1 Kings 17. I remind you of what James says. That Elijah or Elias, he was a man subject to like passions as we are. And he prayed. He prayed earnestly that it might not rain. And it rained not on the earth by the space of three years and six months. Then the Bible says in verse 18, and he prayed again. And he prayed again. I'm glad that our God does not limit the number of requests that we have. Sometimes I find myself with teenagers or younger people and they will be asking questions through the years, I have been known to limit the number of questions that could be asked to me in a day. That's question number one. That's question number two. If some of our young people have been to youth camp with us and you make a trip out of state with young people and keep them for several days and your questions might get limited because my patience is limited. I'm glad that our God does not limit our prayers. Elijah prayed. And God heard him. 
And God answered him. And isn't it a blessing that God put this simple statement in Scripture and he prayed again. And he prayed again. I'm glad that in times of difficulty, it's been three and a half years since he prayed. And it would not. Now he prays between these two prayers, certainly. But he prayed that it might not rain. And he prayed again. And the Bible just simply states, as a matter of fact, and the heaven gave rain and the earth brought forth her fruit. He prayed, but he prayed again. I want you to notice this second prayer. You'll find the second prayer in chapter 18. Chapter 18. In chapter 18, we find Elijah and the great conquest with the prophets of Baal. And of course, we know that it is the Lord God who is God. And he answers by fire from heaven. The fire of the Lord failed, consumed the burnt sacrifice, the wood, the altar, and the water, everything there in verse 38. Interesting story. If you've never read that, take the time to read 1 Kings chapter 18. After God has answered in a miraculous way, then verse 41, verse 41, the Bible says 1 Kings chapter 18, verse 41, this is the reference to, and he prayed again. Verse 41, and Elijah said unto Ahab, now remember there's been three and a half years of drought. Elijah said unto Ahab, Get thee up, eat and drink, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. There's been no rain for three and a half years. And Elijah is so sure in his God, he is so sure that his God will hear him and answer his prayer that he again declares something to Ahab. And he says, there is a sound of abundance of rain. Verse 42. So Ahab went up to eat and to drink. Notice what Elijah does. The Bible says, and Elijah went up to the top of Carmel, the Mount Carmel. And he cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. Now, there are times that you'll see Elijah as a man downhearted, and he gets low. But I believe that verse 42 here is not a place where he is, is, is low in discouragement. I believe that verse 42 is a place where Elijah is down upon the earth, and his face is between his knees. He's down on his knees before God and he is begging God, God, you stopped the rain three and a half years ago. I've told Ahab that rain is coming again and God, I'm expecting you to answer this time as you've answered so many times before. And so verse 43, isn't this just like us? He prays and then he looks for the answer. He said to his servant, go up now, look toward the sea. And he went up and looked and said, there's nothing. Have you ever prayed and there was nothing? And uh, Elijah, he said, go again seven times. Go again seven times. I wonder what Elijah's doing while this man's running back and forth looking to see if there's any rain. If I could just imagine, I'd say Elijah's on his face before God. And it came to pass at the seventh time that he said, Behold, there ariseth a little cloud out of the sea like a man's hand. And he said, Go up, say to Ahab, Prepare thy chariot, and get thee down, that the rain stop thee not. And it came to pass in the meanwhile that the heaven was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain. Elijah didn't just pray up a drizzle. He didn't just pray up a fog. When he prayed, it stopped. And when he prayed, the heavens opened up. It was black with clouds and wind, and there was a great rain, the Bible says. So I, I want you to notice that he prayed. Then I want you to notice that he prayed again. Let me make some statements about this second prayer when he prayed again. Notice the posture of his prayer in verse 42. It's a posture of humility. He cast himself down upon the earth and put his face between his knees. He got as low as he could get as he goes before God. 
beseeching him, begging him to send rain again. His posture is one of humility and not one of haughtiness. We must be careful. We must be careful making demands of God. God, I demand you. God, I command you. You'll hear that from time to time from, from places. We come with requests and we come with petitions and we come asking God to work. We come asking in humility. The posture of his prayer was one of humility. I want you to notice the place of his prayer. He went up to the top of Carmel. He went up. Though he went down upon his knees, he went up in his position. He's getting as high as he can get. He's getting as close to God as he can be. Carmel as a name simply means fruitful field or a place of plenty. When you read this chapter, chapter number 18, Carmel and its slopes have been a place of spiritual battle. Verse 19 of chapter 18, now therefore, this is Elijah proposing a challenge to Ahab and to his men. Verse 19, now therefore send and gather to me all Israel unto Mount Carmel and the prophets of Baal, 450, and the prophets of the groves, 400. So they gather, verse 20, so they gathered the prophets together unto Mount Carmel. Mount Carmel for Elijah has been most recent a place of spiritual battle. Not only has it been a place of spiritual battle, but it has been a place of triumphant victory. In verse 38, we see the fire of God falling and answering this prayer of Elijah as he is in a contest with 450 prophets of Baal. It's a place of triumphant victory. And then in verse 38, the Bible says, when all the people saw it, when they saw that God had answered by fire, when they saw it, notice this, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, He is the God. The Lord, He is the God. How could a man pray himself into a three and a half year drought? How could Elijah pray himself into very difficult circumstances that he will live under for three and a half years? I wonder if in his heart this was the time that he was looking for. He knew the mighty power of God. He knew that God was able to answer his request. He knew that God was able to send fire down from heaven. That what mattered to him was the, the, the state of his nation, his people, an idolatrous people. And when all the people saw it, they fell on their faces and they said, the Lord, he is the God. If there's anything to make a present application, if there's anything that we might can pray for, there's, I gave you a list of some things in the beginning of the service that we could pray for. There, there's something that we might can pray for specifically. It's that the people about us would see God for who He is. They would see themselves for who they are and where they are. That they would fall upon their faces before God, crying out to Him. I wonder if Elijah had looked in faith to this day when the people would fall and say, The Lord, He is God. It's a place, Carmel is a place of spiritual battle. It's a place of triumphant victory. It's a place of community brokenness. There's the posture of His prayer, humility. There's the place of His prayer, Carmel, and there's the promise of his prayer. Verse 41, Get thee up, for there is a sound of abundance of rain. He prophesied that it wouldn't rain for three and a half years based upon a prayer. And he promises that it's about to rain again based upon his prayer. He prayed, and he prayed again. He prayed and he prayed again. I've noticed what a contrast in verse number 42. 
Uh, Ahab went up to eat and to drink, and Elijah went up to pray. One went to play, and one went to pray. God sent an answer. And we read that in verse number 45. That answer came with a fury. There was clouds and wind and a great rain. Now, some simple principles of application for prayer. I said this is a picture of the power of prayer. There are several other prayers that we'll look at in time. And Elijah, a picture of the power of prayer. But for tonight, he prayed and it rained not. And he prayed and it rained. God give us less players and more prayers. Elijah went up to eat and drink. Uh, Ahab went up to eat and drink. And Elijah went up to the top of Mount Carmel and cast himself down upon the earth. Is our posture in these days one of pride? Or is it one of brokenness? Is it one of haughtiness? Or is it one of humility? When last did we pray effectually? I prayed specifically. God answered specifically. I prayed. God answered. When is the last time that God answered your prayer? Keep track of them. Note them, write them down, thank Him for them. If you will ask Him needs, requests, petitions in prayer, then when He answers those, go back and thank Him for them. But note, when is the last time that we prayed effectually? The answer to that might be found in this next question, when last did we pray earnestly? And perhaps even uh, an even deeper question from over in James chapter number 5. The Bible says the effectual fervent prayer of a righteous man availeth much. The answer to those two questions might be found in this. When did we last pray righteously? We are common people. Common people with common words with common needs. What you go through tonight, people all around the world are going through. You're not alone in that. Whatever your struggle is, we, we gave a list of health needs tonight at the beginning of this service. There are financial needs that people find themselves under today. There are great emotional burdens upon people, anxiety and trouble and care. People are under today a great load. There are a lot of people under it. Not to minimize what you go through. But it's a common thing. We're common people. With common needs. With this. Simple. Tool. That we call prayer. I had the privilege to pray with the young man. A few weeks ago. He wanted to trust Jesus Christ as his Savior. And I had gone through some things in Scripture and I told him, I said, now you need to pray. Would you call upon the Lord? Would you pray and talk to the Lord? And this is what he said. He said, I don't know how. I don't know how to pray. And I said, do it just like this. If God were sitting in this chair beside us, and you wanted to talk to him. What would you say? If God were seated next to us right here. We were, we were right here on this platform. At this pew. I said if God were seated right here. What would you say to him? How would you say it? And he said. Oh that's easy. And I said. That's how easy it is. To pray. You just talk to him. You just tell him your heart. Tell him your burdens. Common people with a common tool, but an uncommon 
Almighty God. He prayed and it rained not. And he prayed again. And the heavens opened up. Oh, child of God, may these days drive us to our knees in prayer. That in the end, the people may fall on their face and say, The Lord, He is God. The Lord, He is God. It was not Elijah who got the glory this day. It was not Elijah's prayer what was exalted. But it was God Himself. May all these circumstances and all these events that we find ourselves in drive us to Scripture. May they drive us to prayer. May through them all, God be honored and glorified. May souls be drawn to Him. If you don't know the Lord Jesus Christ as your Savior, if you've never trusted Christ as your Savior, you are without hope. You are without help. You can call upon the name of the Lord. If you want to know more, if you want someone to pray with you, you call us at our church. You contact us on the, the, the Facebook page or the YouTube uh, page. You contact us. We would love to talk to you about having peace in your heart, about having forgiveness of sin, about having hope, and love, and forgiveness direct from God to you. I love you folks. I can't wait till we get to meet again. I'm thankful for the Word of God. As God speaks to me from this book, I'll try to be faithful to deliver it to you. May you be encouraged. May you be uplifted. These things come from my heart. Father, it's a blessing. It's a blessing to have the tools that we have today so that though we can't be together in the same room as we're accustomed to and as we want to be and look forward to being again, at this time, we can still hear from the Word of God. May you speak to us. May you encourage us. May you teach us in these days about this great tool that we have, the privilege of prayer common people with an uncommon God. Thank you for Elijah, for his example, for his testimony. May we walk in his steps. May our world be affected and changed for the good, for the glory of God. Through the prayers of your people, through your will being done, as we submit and yield ourselves to thee. Bless our nation. Be with us, God, as we would turn to thee. Help us, Lord, in these hours. We need you in these days. In Christ's name we pray and ask these things. Amen. Amen. Thank you for joining us this evening. Sunday morning, 11 o'clock a.m. We'll see you back here at the same place.